Okay, so we're having a look at the Atari Star Wars machine, and it's firing up. However, let's see if you can hear this. The sound is just making a hissing noise. So if we start a game, it sounds like the soundboard's just resetting in a loop. So we need to get the back off the machine and take a look at that. This is the interconnect board that goes between the two: the CPU board, the AVG board, and the soundboard. Um, as you can see we've got some flaky pins here so that might be what the fault is so I need to go and find another one of these now this one looks brand new this is an aftermarket one um, so we'll fit it onto the board and then we'll put it back in and see if it works okay so I've replaced that connector and that did not cure the fault the sounds was still not working properly so I'm just going to meter the uh, 5 volt line see how it's looking now we've got 5.1 out of the board so that should be fine. So, I've got an actual problem with that soundboard that we need to look at. Okay, so I've got this spare soundboard that I don't think I've ever tested. So, let's stick it in the cab and see what it does. Right, so this is the board installed. Now, uh, it had the original Star Wars ROMs on this, and I could hear it reset, but then nothing was happening. So, I took the CPU out and the two ROMs and fitted the the multi-game board, as this this uh, actual board set's got the ESB Star Wars multi-game kit fitted. So I put the multi-game board on, and then the sound's gone back to being funny again. Let me just fire it up. I don't know if you can hear it from the back of the cab, but the sound's just making a horrible crunchy noises like it was doing before. So I'm wondering, either that ROM or that CPU's bad, I think. So let's try swapping then. Well, I've swapped out the CPU, let's fire up, and you hear the reset noise but not the crunching noise anymore, but there's no startup sound, so it's not right, so I don't know what the hell's going on here. Right, so I refitted the original CPU board, uh, put the multi-game kit back on and used the CPU from the other soundboard, the one that didn't work. Now I think it's going to work. Remember. Oh, oh, damn it. He's playing the wrong sounds. Right, I think there's an address line stuck or something on this. As it's not selecting the right song, right sounds at the right time. Yeah, it's not right at all. Okay, so I'm looking at the schematic diagram, and this appears to be the interface between the CPU and the soundboard. So we've got this parallel interface with full handshaking, uh, which consists of two 74 LS374s. Now, an LS374 is, I believe, it's a quad D latch. So basically, what happens here is if you want to read data from the soundboard, you toggle the sound read line low which will basically this this side here is the data bus on the soundboard so when you toggle this line low you're basically transferring the data from this side to this side which the main cpu board can then read and if you want to write to the boards i.e you want to put, get a sound to play or to play speech etc what you do is you would load on the pd side you would load the values in and then you would toggle the sound right and that will basically push that data onto the uh, the sound board bus side. So that's basically how it works. So I, I'm suspecting that the problem is going to be with one of these two. Well, more likely the the sound right side here, 5K. So uh, let's go check that out. Now I can't operate this soundboard standalone. So in order to test it, I'm using my Boardmaster. Uh, and annoyingly, uh, these seem to be super unreliable. My my LCD backlight's gone, so I've got to shine a light on it to try and see it. So uh, I've just took this up onto 5K and done a test. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like we've got potentially a bad output here on 3Q. So let's pull that out of the board and see see how it tests out the circuit. So I decided that both 74 374s looked bad, uh, the one for reading and the one for writing data. Now because the CPU had failed, it's possible that this was a chain reaction. So on the data side of one of these maybe it failed and caused damage to the uh, CPU or the CPU failed and caused damage to these two buffers 
uh, as they're all on the same bus. Either way, these two uh, seem bad, so I've basically desold them and put some new sockets in. And I've got the chips that I've removed here to test. So we'll put that in. And let's see if you can see it. Now it's basically saying it's failing. It's got a line stuck low and a line stuck high. So that's dead. And let's do the same again with the other one. And that's saying that we've got a line stuck high here. So both of those are in fact bad. So let's stick some brand new ones in the board and then we'll retest. Right, so we've got the board hooked back up to the tester again. So let's go and test. That one passes. Now, let's see if I can do this while I'm on the camera. Not sure if that's on properly. Uh, let's try that. And they're both passes. So both those chips were at fault and the CPU. Let's go stick this back in the machine and see if it works now. Fingers crossed. Okay, so the board's back in, Multi Games refitted, the working CPU's been refitted. And let's get my remote control. So uh, fingers crossed and power it up. That's sounding promising. Takes a minute to warm up the screen. Oh, wasn't too bad. Okay, let's see if it works. We're fine, standing by. Got on the proper level. It's doing all the right sounds. Very, very happy. This is hard to pump up, it? <laughs> Yeah, that's working. Excellent. I'm very happy about that. That's now ready for the next party. I'll just let it die off. Come on, shoot me. There we go. Remember, the boss will be with you always. That all sounds great.